Ooh. Good morning. This is exciting. It is right now. Recording in progress. Right now we are officially starting. Ah, it is June the 1st, and at least in the Northern Hemisphere, we are getting more and more sunlight, and I am gobsmacked all the time at how apparently I'm a piece of nature, and the more daylight there is, the better I feel. I don't know why it should come as a surprise to me, except that I think too much, <laughs> that I should not have a visceral, that's a good word for it, a visceral reaction to the better climate. Of course I should be in a good mood, a better mood. Enjoy it. Okay. Um, I, I'm Rabbi Brian. This is a different way of doing a religious service, and I'm glad that you've stumbled here. I have a meme to show you. Here it is. Oh, not this one, but this one's good too. This is self-care, Different nine different ways self-care can look. All different ways of taking care of yourself. Um, and the last of which is sometimes taking care of yourself is by setting a boundary. You can see the complete lack of anger on this person's face as they're telling the person to go fuck themselves. As we talked about last week, you can be mad, just don't have to be mean about it. Here's what I wanted to show you. There it is. Zooming in. Dun, 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 dun. This is a different way of doing a spiritual service. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're decided to dive in with me to try to figure out this complicated thing. We are spiritual beings who need to live in the real world, and it is complicated. I am joined by a group of friends. Friends, wave hello. Say hi. We're live on Zoom. Thanks. I'm going to just take a moment to look at all your beautiful faces. I wish it were this beautiful. Oh, did I just overhear somebody put themselves down live with a yes. with their microphone yes. open? Connie, what's going on? <laughs> You're not feeling that beautiful today, Connie? Oh no. What's going on? She's here? got she's got treatment for some cancers on her face and it's kinda icky. Oh. oh. oh it that. looks beautiful. I'll give you a, I, I learned a quote, Connie, and tell me if this doesn't tickle your chimes. That's not a phrase, but <laughs> <laughs> This is what happens when liturgy is without, there's no book. So here, here's a phrase. All things that are loved are beautiful. Nice. Yes, that's very good. All things that are loved are beautiful. True? Yeah. True for me. Oh. All things that are loved and are beautiful. And the opposite is not always so true. But all things that are loved are beautiful. And even when you don't feel so beautiful, if you're loved, you're beautiful. Connie, you got, you got a man right next to you who I think loves you inside out. I know. I know. He loves me greatly. Just, just point of information. Next Tuesday is our 63rd wedding anniversary. Oh, my <laughs> God. Uh, Mazel Tov. Mazel 63 <laughs> years Mazel of marriage? Tov. Yes. All right. What kind of advice do you have for us, Connie? <laughs> you just got to struggle through it. <laughs> yeah. there's, no, there's no easy way to put it. You just have to struggle through it. That's it. It's amazing. Love one another it's, and and just just get stubborn and say I'm not going to be statistics. What do you mean by that? I'm not going to be a statistic. Well, you know, we got married when we were 17 years old. And the statistics say it'll never ever last. Mm. And so I have a stubborn streak in me, and <laughs> I was going to 
we were going to make it one way or the other. Somebody was going to hit somebody on the head. I don't know who. <laughs> I, I don't think you want to admit to that live on a on a broadcast service. <laughs> so I want I want to open this up to everyone. And last week I had a few moments where I just oh hi Evan hi Chad and Lisa hi Meg people who are still joining and Al and Wendy and Missy and thank you all Joan for joining in. Um. So last week I took a moment. I took two moments. Oh. I'm going to hold on to that for a second. First, I owe an apology to the people on Facebook. I royally screwed up the uh, the microphones last week, so I'm sorry about that. Okay, back to what I was talking about. No, not back to what I'm talking about because I don't remember what I was saying. Oh, I remember what I was saying. I'm back. Hi, welcome. I was saying that last week I took two minutes, two moments where I just looked at I got confused, I got a little off, and I took two moments, I remember of them, to just look at the faces of the people on the screen. Just to remind me that you really don't give a shit. Like if I, if, if I, if I do a little, like you're fine with me getting 80% of this, like if I get 80% of the service right and well, y'all are fine. Hallelujah. Okay, there was a little sarcasm to that, Meg. <laughs> Am I misreading you, Meg? Well, just a teeny tiny, very small. But it's true. It doesn't matter if you screw up. Thank you, Meg. I want to offer you guys the same gift that I have. So I made a note to myself. I called it this, love from a box on the screen. And I'm wondering, is there somebody else who would like to take a moment? Is there a thing, and this, this, it might not be, but the same way that Harold and Connie got to tell us that they were married, they're, they're coming up on their 67th wedding anniversary, 63rd, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to push it, 63rd <laughs> wedding anniversary. Is there something that you would like to share we have a community. There's a group right here. There's a group of all these people in all these different Zoom boxes. Is there, I'm going to change screen so you can all, everyone can see all the different boxes. Is there a thing you want to say to the whole group and you'd like a little bit of public acknowledgement? Because we have this community right here at the ready. We have a loving community. Is there a thing that you're kind of proud of that you want to tell your group? your group. You make this your group, it's your group. Is there a thing you'd like to share with the group or is there a, yeah, go ahead, Betsy. Okay. I had on Thursday, on, on Wednesday, I had the first uh, recital, piano recital of my students that I've had in five years, ever since before <laughs> COVID. And it was just a wonderful experience. Lovely. Oh, hey. Yay. Is there something hey. else? Did you maybe do a thing last week where you made an apology that you meant to make and had been putting off? Is there a thing of which you're proud that you want to share with a group? Or you just want to feel like you got to add a boy or add a girl or add a rabbi? Michael, go ahead. Um, well, I'm not quite ready to, to wax personally. But I will say, wherever I, we go, there you, we are. That's, that's pretty waxing philosophical. I'm with you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so let me, let, me, let, me, um, let me consider this moment that I just did. It, and anyone else, you have a thing? This might, there might be a reason this isn't usually done. But this, this, this little segment might not work very well. But I'm willing to try one more. Go ahead, Lenny. Well, I have a friend uh, from the Groundlings Theater who is in hospice. And I'm, I, with my little, eight, oh, I shouldn't put myself down. With my, some, 
with my supposed ADD brain, <laughs> I am coordinating the people who see him because we're all in comedy and I gather stories and, and books and, and act things out for him. And it's working so well. He's so, he still has a, he still gets it. He gets all the jokes and he, he's having fun. And the people coming to see him are having fun. And and so um I I think that goes along the yeah with the line of what you're talking about. So let I'm, me let me ask you a question. Are you dare telling us that you're a little proud of yourself? I'm pr I'm proud of myself for 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 the stories and the people that are coming and the stories they're telling and how happy he is to see everybody. It sounds like you're proud of yourself, and also you you're sharing with us that your heart's a little broken. You got a friend on the way out. Thank yes. You. Thank you, thank you, Lynn, for sharing. That's what I was imagining. We have this group we can do. Emily, you have a thought? Yes, I do. I I, I have um, my one sister that is still alive. She's ninety six years old, and she's taken a turn for the worse now. So oh. she's going downhill. I'm beginning to lose. Um, you know, Fact. memory and so forth. Yeah. She was in the hospital, and I, I thought, okay, I better go in, get my son to take me in to see her. But probably the last time, time I see her, and you know, it's just forgetting so much. But she was sitting on her bed, and I said, "Vera, let's sing a song." And and you know, I said, "Let's sing." This world is not my home. I'm just a passer. Do you know, she know, knew every word of it, and she belted that out with me, and I think they probably heard us all over down, down the hall. But it was like that. It was the best thing I could have done. I love and I'll, that. Maybe the last time I see her, I don't know. Emily, it sounds like it's, you're sharing with us you, you, your heart's somewhat broken, and also you're proud of yourself. Same, same yeah. thing. How does it feel to share with a whole group of people? Yeah. It's kind of nice. It's good. Yeah. Nice. So I'm planning on doing this again next week because it didn't go that badly this week. So <laughs> if there's a... <laughs> if there's a thing, let's see how that goes and we'll we'll try this again next week. Um, I want to try a, an idea. We'll see. Oh, some follow-ups from last week. Last week we had the we ran for the first time the uh, suffering Olympics to see who was suffering the most. We decided that was a really bad idea. Uh, <laughs> so we tried the bingo cards of things for which you're grateful or ways of keeping someone else from annoying you too much. And we have a winner in our bingo game. Um, but question: How many of you did did uh, did a we're hoping to win that bingo game. <laughs> All right. Just like, so there's only, it's Michael, you're going to be the only one disappointed then. Um, That's Al, not like you. <laughs> Al Brown won the bingo game by cleverly while he and I were having a conversation say, what's to stop me from putting all easy answers on my bingo card and just saying I got a bingo. And I thought, in true religion outside the box format, I can't really be the judge of whether or not your bingo card is filled out well or not. That's, I mean, that, right. that seemed judgmental. So I just had to say, Al, if you say you got a bingo, you got a bingo. So there's a book on its way to you um, oh my God. In, in the mail. You should en Good. enjoy it. But I, I would love when you get it, Al, if you can maybe give us a little bit of a um, a teaser so that you can tell people what you got out of each chapter, or maybe we'll do a read along. We'll figure out how we, how we play. So thank you for doing that. Um, Sounds good. We're going to have a new Bible soon. Uh, ju it's just a gospel. Oh, speaking, <laughs> it's not a whole Bible. Speaking of that, uh, Marty, who's a friend of James in prison, there's, this is just a, it's a proof copy of the book. So there's a line going across it. Marty, who uh, was in, imprisoned with James 
had been working on a manuscript since 2016 called Turning Keys, Finding Peace, Light, and Freedom in the Most Unexpected Place. And uh, religion, on, religion Outside the Box helped to put this little book together. I am reading it, and I was just blown away. Um, this is not a... It, it's... It's it's a brilliant book, and it's not in the genre that I usually read. Um, but just learning about Marty's life and where he grew up and how he turned himself around is just just amazing. Um, it's only available by EPUB until I fix the links. But if you look for Turning Keys, you can find an EPUB. And I I literally I'm I'm at part two, and I I finished last night. I, part one. I got to part two and I cannot wait to keep reading this book. Literally. I, I don't, he ended part one so brilliantly and I just want to know what happened. What happened to his bunk mate? What happened to him? Um, yeah. This is the man that you've been supporting all these years. Um, this is one of his friends. So James Literally. and Marty, when they, James they, they were next to each other at high desert state prison and they uh -huh. started the first inmate created self-help group which has mm. gone on to replicate itself over mm. and over again and move to other yards and other prisons. It's called Try, Truly Redefine Yourself. And mm. it's just an amazing... amazing. It's, it's amazing. And I am... Mm -hmm. um, I am... Proud. Just take, I'm proud and taken by um, what these guys in the worst of all places are able to do. Mm. Well, um, so that's Bingo, Suffering Olympics... Here's a question for you. Spiritual religious qualities. You're allowed to take four spiritual religious qualities with you in your overnight bag. Um, I'm claiming patience. What ones do you want? Give me some other spiritual religious qualities. Humor. 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 Nice one, Michael. Forgiveness. Open mind. Forgiveness. Nice. Serenity. Kindness. <coughs> Kindness. Forgiveness, serenity. Having an open mind. Whoa. Serenity. I lost some of those that were brilliant and I didn't get them. Having an open mind? Open mindedness. <clears throat> Mindedness. Kindness. Compassion. Compassion. It's like you guys know all these answers. <laughs> Joy. Did you say joy? I did. Oh, Let's God. not forget mm -hmm. about joy. Oops, I'm off the page. Joy. joy. Wonderful. You are friends. Being a friend. I'm gonna put kind I'm gonna friend. I, I don't know how to write that one in the same I'm gonna write it down. Friendliness. Here. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Novel um, Friendship. That's the word. Thank you. Friendship. Yeah, friendship. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'd like friends. to add in one that we did not add in that was not said here was anything about hope mm. or optimism. Hopefulness. Hopefulness. Um, gratitude. Yeah. I'm this serious. Means... What's the question? The serious. Okay. <laughs> the question is. I have it written down. Hold on. I gotta find where I where I am on my outline. Oh, here it is. My father used to say, um, "As long as you have your health, family, and sense of humor." He narrowed it down to those were his three top priorities. From this list, you're packing. You have space for two. What are your top two spiritual religious qualities that you want to have? Go ahead, peace. Peace was not on there, was there? Kindness and gratitude. Kindness and gratitude. Humor and Love. Love's a good one. Love's a good 
I was thinking the same thing that that <laughs> yeah, love to the list, and we all have a full bingo card. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I keep thinking resilience. Yeah. 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 Resilience is good too. I'm a big Candace fan. said empathy. Empathy. Yeah. Hold on a second. Um, please hold, because I know I had some where I was going with this outline, and I have, <laughs> I don't have an idea right now. Maria? <laughs> My dear friend Maria? I'm here. Do you remember we were going to do this thing, and then we were going to break into small groups, but first we were going to do it all together as a large group? Okay, just a sec. No, no, no. I didn't mean to set up small groups. I meant, what the oh. fuck was my outline? What was my point in that? <laughs> uh, Maybe not... it was for the small groups to discuss the most important ones to the individual. There was a That's thing. a good was... idea, Meg, but that wasn't it. That wasn't it. <laughs> it was, it was, you did this at the beginning. It was inviting people to use the community for support and encouragement oh okay because the because they would be able to sort of share there more people would be able to share if we broke into small groups yeah at the bottom line is you've got our attention yeah um <laughs> hi, <laughs> Whatever folks. You want. we're gonna we're gonna do remember monty python and now for something completely different <laughs> 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 Bum, bum. <laughs> We're gonna try something different. Um, my my word, am I? I'm feeling a little embarrassed, but that's okay. Let me go back to. Okay. I had a thought. Wait. Hold on. Let me remove this page. I had a thought. I have a lot of thoughts. Let me look. At <laughs> I wish I could help you out. You're, uh, we're all doing fine. Okay, good. Not this one, not that one, not that one. Hold on. I'll be right back. We're, we're not going to wait for you, Michael. All right. <laughs> um, I had this idea. had this idea of my new definition of a Sabbath. That my new Sabbath practice, and I'm going to do my best to try to convert all you to my new definition of a Sabbath practice. Or my, the definition for me of a Sabbath practice is now and forever henceforth. Because because it's religion. Until you change, <laughs> right? Until I forget what the hell I was doing. But <laughs> I had this idea of saying, okay, from now for the next fourteen hours. So do me a favor. Think about what fourteen hours from now is in your life. So add twelve hours to where you are currently, and then two more than that. And I hmm. think most of us is going to be bad. You left out the R in vitriol. What? Yeah. What's, what's vitriol? Vitriol. Thank you. Okay. You left out the R. Okay. Uh. V-I-T-R-I-O-L. Vitriol. Carol, do you have a definition for us of vitriol? Anger, harshness, negative adrenaline going out. Negative adrenaline going out, like hatred. Like anger is one thing, but hatred is another. Vitriol is like the fuel that's behind anger. And my idea is, what if I committed to have the next 14 hours hmm. free from vitriol? Free from vitriol. 
let me let me try it this way. I'm gonna try selling it with the negative. Who here wants more vitriol and hatred <laughs> in their life? I just want to make sure I'm not gonna be upsetting any of you who were hoping for more. Okay, so we established know. nobody nobody wants more hatred. Do you can you imagine a thing, a place, a situation between now and fourteen hours from now where you might pick up a little extra vitriol, a little extra hatred. Go ahead, Carol. Only if you turn on the news. Ah, yeah, exactly. I was thinking that too. So if I define my Sabbath as 14 hours free from vitriol, guess what I know I should not do? Turn on the TV. Turn on the TV, listen to the news. I think I actually can because I did it this morning. I listened to the news while I was walking the dogs, but I did my best not to let my blood pressure get any higher. It's good. It's good. Are you willing to try for 14 hours? And why, uh, I don't know if it should be 14 hours or 16 hours. 24 hours seemed really too pat and obvious, but something mm -hmm. about- Let's four, stay with 14. 14 is good. 14. 14 hours free from vitriol. Well, if you think about it, eight hours of the 24 hours, you're hopefully sleeping. <laughs> right. Or, or, yeah. Yeah. So you, you don't have to go that, you don't have to go into tomorrow. 14 hours free from vitriol. Possible to do, Jordan Hiller, I ask? <laughs> challenging. Challenging. Why is it Very challenging? challenging. Is, is, is vitriol like all, it's, is it, it's everywhere? You got to make sure not to touch it? Well, it's it's just it's part of the human condition, I guess. If you're if you're uh, if you're not an evolved spiritual creature, explain it. So there's that phrase that says, uh, "If you're not outraged, you're not paying attention." Right. Our environments uh, are are enraging sometimes. Our environments are enraging. Is it possible to carve out? Space from that reality. Does anyone here think that that's impossible to do? And then I'll get to you, Ron. Is this impossible to do? Uh, maybe hard, Evan. Hard, even yeah, hard to do. But maybe... hard, definitely. Uh, for me, my Saturdays are definitely my 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 Shabbats are definitely my craziest day at work yeah. and involve the most of. Uh, my extremely out of touch boss being like, we all wish we could take another vacation to our second home. Uh, yeah, something that drives nice. your, your blood pressure up. But if not my actual Shabbat, I bet I can do it on a day off. So let me ask a, a question then Ron, then Michael. Um, this was how I was thinking. It was like, let's say you make a commitment to 14 hours without vitriol, but then you take a step off of the curb and you land your foot straight in some dog shit or a deep puddle <laughs> or something. And you go, God fucking damn it. Da -da 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 -da, and you have that moment of vitriol. Do you then say, fuck it. I'm going to just be angry the rest of the time. No, add a minute to the clock. Just add a minute to the clock or just say, you know what? I got angry. Yeah. Wipe the shit, shit off. Break nothing. <laughs> Thank you, Betsy. Wipe the shit off. Go ahead, Ron. I was just thinking rather, you know, if you're not outraged, uh, you're not paying attention. Maybe it's because we can spend 14 hours paying attention to something else. Yeah. Oh, nice. If you're not outraged, you're not paying attention. Or if you are outraged, maybe you're paying attention too closely to one thing. Something like yeah. that. Michael, go ahead. I don't disagree with you, Michael. I just can't hear you. I'll chime in while we're waiting for the other yeah. Michael. Okay. <laughs> okay, when he's done, I say something. I think we can pay attention without being outraged. I I don't uh, I don't subscribe to that aphorism. I agree with you. I think it's a it it's slightly lazy to say I'm justified to be as pissed off as I and and there's nothing wrong with being mad again. It's just doing it with with 
too much behind it. Go ahead, Michael P. Okay, I remember now. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, first of all, I think it's, I, I'm very excited that you're focusing on this. Uh, a, B, um, uh, this is uh, the pinnacle, uh, I think, philosophically, of the spiritual practice we're doing. This is step one. If you had to make a guide, it feels like it's step one dealing with this. The other thing, and then I'll stop, is when you talk about vitriol as the fuel, I think that's very useful uh, to look at it that way because, you know, there's there's things that, there, I guess in terms of guilt, I think guilt makes me angry and it's a misinterpretation. But if it's realistic guilt, then it's one thing. If it's unrealistic, that's another. And the unrealistic is what is the spiritual challenge. Get, gets us into trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Guilt. Nothing, Un, there, there, unrealistic. Very, very fun. What is unrealistic guilt? Meg, question what, for what you. Is, Meg, what is unrealistic guilt? Uh, hold, hold off on that, Meg, for a sec. Um, okay. Let me ask you a, a question. Meg, is it possible to go to not bite the hook and to go 14 hours without extra vitriol? Yeah. Okay. Have you ever done it? I think so. In yeah. fact, that with your whole discussion here, I'm wondering if I'm tuned in enough. How because so? Because I don't, I don't necessarily feel a lot of anger unless I read the news and I've avoided reading the news. Right. Okay. Although I'm, I'm dealing with a situation that maybe I should be a little more angry or recognize my anger. So I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but you're searching. Keep, keep on keeping on. I have a lot of white men who have their hands up. Ray and then John and then Jackson. Jack. Well, for me, I think it, on, on the paying attention part, it's yeah. how you respond to the information you get. Correct. Um, Correct. If, you, you're going to get the same this information. Past how week, you... had I not been paying attention to NPR listening, I would have not heard the break in and the wonderful news. So it depends on how you take the information that you get. Uh, sometimes it's, um, oh, oh, damn! I'm, you know, not again. Or I'm sorry. I'm sorry that happened. But um, I think it de a lot depends on your total mindset when you go start the day. I mean, if your day starts off, you know. Stepping in shit, mm -hmm. you know, it may be that way the rest of the day, but it may not either. I, you know, I, I'm with you, right? And it's it's impossible. It's sometimes you you just there's there's too much shit, and you can't just laugh it off. Sometimes that it it's too hard. Go ahead, John, and then Jack. I'm reminded of a a line from a song <clears throat> that goes, "Who's to say?" You have to lose for someone else to win. Amen. It's not a zero-sum game. It's a great point. Thank you, John. Jack. Yeah, one, one of the primary aspects of my spiritual life is that when dealing, dealing with people is the fact that everyone else is yourself in another form. That's a that's a that's a deep idea, that it's everyone what? else is you in a different form. Mm -hmm. It does definitely change the way that I want to respond to some of the people who randomly call me to sell me something I didn't need. <laughs> if they're me in a different form. Mm -hmm. I should definitely be kind. Go ahead, Dolly. So, what I was thinking of when you were talking about this kind of goes back to the bingo. What I did do, I couldn't quite fill out my whole bingo card, but I did a lot of it. And when some of those stuff happened, instead of being annoyed by it, I could go like you had suggested. Oh, look, I just got another X on my bingo card. That's fantastic. It's all a change of perspective. 
And the same thing with this. If I'm going for the 14 hours of this, if I start to feel that, I can go, oh, wait, you hold off. You're in the Sabbath. Yes, right. That's exactly that was that was that was that was my idea in creating the 14 hours of vitriol free 14 hours of and if somebody starts snarking smack to me later today, I can then say to them, oh, I'm sorry, I can't I like, can we talk about this tomorrow? Because I have a commitment to go 14 hours vitriol free. And if I'm going to engage with you right now, it's going to it's going to mess me up. Can you imagine saying that to someone? No. Okay. Say, wait, 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 wait. Oh. I didn't say, would you do it? I said, can you imagine? Can you just, that's all I want right now. Can you imagine saying to someone, I saw, mom, if you're listening, I oh, there, mom is listening. It, it's, it's, a, it's a mom cartoon that I saw once, and it was a guy standing on a street with a phone, and his his comment was, I can't talk now, mom. I'm in a good mood. <laughs> mom, that, it's actually a good tool. So can you yeah, actually that's it. So can you say to someone, let, let me change change it change the focus of that. Can you imagine me saying to someone? Not that can you do it? Can you imagine me saying to someone, yo, 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 whoa, slow down for a second. I'm on my 14, I'm on my Sabbath, which I'm trying to go 14 hours vitriol free. So I can't do this right now. Can you imagine me saying this to someone? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Did no one say no? <laughs> we know you. Okay. So what magic power? Okay. I'll send, do you need a hat to, to do that? No. I actually can't wait to do it. I love yeah, you. Yeah, me too. Wait a moment. Wait a moment. Did you guys just all change your minds that quickly? You're willing to do it? Avon, go ahead. I I pictured, when you said you, I pictured myself doing it to a customer today. And I, I pictured how hilarious my firing would be. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how that would go. Of like, you know, I can't deal with your complaint at the moment. I'm vitriol. It's like it's a diet. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I'm a, well, I think well, I got I got a I got an idea, and this this is this is wrong, but it feels so right. Is you say, look, this is my religious holiday. This is my <laughs> this Sabbath. Is, this is where right. the firing would this, be. This is the Sabbath for me. I can't take in hatred right now. Right. Or we could always say what says. I'm sorry. I'm vitriol. Free today, or, uh, <laughs> like you know, you can't use. I mean, I'm intolerant. Like I'm like lactose intolerant. Right, 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 right. It's just a fact. I'm I'm vitri I'm vitriol uh, uh, allergic today. Go ahead, Troy. You say that the vitriol free, and when they try to give hatred to you, you give them love back. Yeah. Wait a minute, Troy. It sounds vaguely like you said if someone gives you vitriol, you give them love back. Is that because that's what came? That's what we heard. Is that what you meant? Yeah. You just love them back. Oh shit, Everybody. folks! Are we back to this? <laughs> Am, are we about to say yet again? All we need is love. Is that it? Okay. No, I'm, no. I'm gonna ask no, no, you all no, a favor. No. Okay, hold on a second. God forbid. Do <laughs> God forbid, love, 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 love. So, I'm going I doubt, to... I doubt that. God would not forbid love. Go ahead, Troy, Troy's hands down. So, I'm going to do... I'm going to rewrite this out as Sabbath. A Sabbath practice is to try... To go fourteen hours without vitriol. That's good. I can see saying that to people and them going, "What does that mean?" Well, that's. <laughs> I think that gives you a wonderful opportunity to explain yeah. to them. Yeah, and you right. say, mm -hmm. and you say unto them, "What would you say unto them, Dolly?" I would say that I think. I admit, I didn't know what that word meant. 
vitriol. You get so you, I would say 14 hours of not being angry or agitated because right. I get agitated. <laughs> That's the best word. Right. Give me another phrase for it. So without angry hatred? Without anger and hatred. No, I'm fine with anger. So hold on. I'm fine anger. with anger. I want that to be very clear. Anger at the right person at the right time, the right amount for the right reason. Anger is fine. It's the hatred. I want to go 14 hours without without hatred. What, what, Sorry, if, yeah. what, what if the reply was, can you buy that over the counter? <laughs> Vitriol? No, it's illegal. <laughs> I think they give it out for free. <laughs> Oh, so it's not a regulated <laughs> substance. It comes with a Happy Meal, unfortunately. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you all a favor. Hold on. Change oh. the screen to that one. I'm going to zoom in. Hold on on everyone's beautiful faces. I'm going to say the following phrase, and I'd like you all in the loud cacophonous din that is Zoom to repeat after me. But let me tell you what the phrase is before you say it, because the repeat after me, it, it's dangerous sometimes because you don't know what the person's going to end with. <laughs> so let me try to get it right. I... Sabbath. How, um, ah, let me see if I can, I'm going to try it live and see what we get this way. I commit to doing my darndest. Oh, we can use that word. I like that. I commit to doing my darndest to have 14 hours without hatred. Yeah, it's not to fourteen hours without hatred. There's some that I to avoid hatred for fourteen hours. Yeah, I com I commit for fourteen hours to do my darndest to avoid hatred. <laughs> How would you feel if I started it with my Sabbath practice includes a commitment to fourteen hours hatred free? <laughs> With minimal mm -hmm. hatred. Oh, I like that. Minimal hatred. Or avoiding hatred. I like the My, trying to avoid hatred. Because, trying to avoid hatred. My yeah. Sabbath practice includes... How about avoiding additional? Oh, boy. See, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we're working. Okay, okay I got, we're going we're gonna to change, we're gonna change it. Because to try to get more than two people to copyright yeah, to, to do that's yeah, not going to work so i'm going to do it this way i'm going to say hi i'm rabbi brian a sabbath practice of mine includes trying right. to have 14 hours without vitriol or hatred okay and well, stop that's mine okay what's right. yours that's good. right good for you so I'm going to ask Perfect. Michael and John to not answer because you've already spoken. I'm going to ask for voices we haven't heard from before. Can you tell me what your Sabbath practice is that includes something off of this idea? Can you give me a one sentence <clears throat> doozy? Go ahead, Shmuley. Say your um, name first. My, my Sabbath... name is Shmuley. Okay, my name is Shmuley. And my Sabbath practice is to be in a hatred-free diet. For at least 14 hours or ever, just for your Sabbath. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Go but, ahead, Betsy. Okay, it's to, to put vitriol Wait, in wait, the say your name first. My name is Betsy oh. and my Sabbath practice includes. My name is Betsy and my Sabbath practice includes putting, putting vitriol in the garbage, not in the recycling. <laughs> well, done. Very good. well done. Somebody else have a fourteen hour vitriol Sabbath practice that they're willing to go online saying? Go ahead, Dolly, and then Derek. My name is Dolly and my Sabbath practice includes a commitment to doing my darndest to avoid hatred and for me I have to add an agitation. 
Wonderful. Mm. Derek, your turn. Yeah, my name is Derek, and my commitment is to, for, on Sabbath is to take the vitriol in and spit it out and never see it again. Amen. Good. Anyone else want to Sabbath practice? Avon, yeah. Yeah, my, uh, I'm Avon. My Sabbath practice includes 14 hours without unproductive hatred. <gasps> oh, I love the phrase unproductive <laughs> hatred. Love that. Here, I'd like to do it. Go ahead, Emily. My, my, na my name is Emily. My Sabbath practice today is to go 14 hours vitriol free. Oh, very oh, good. I love it. Michael? Oh? <clears throat> my name is Michael, and my Sabbath practice is to love and respect everyone. Mm. You just hit, you hit, a, I, I forgot all about this, Michael. I think it's, this is the opposite side. This is the flip side of the coin of religious practices about love. But let's also say that we can get that same, we can, there's more than one lever we can push. And another lever, instead of going outward and loving on people, is to lower our amount of hatred. Mm. This is just, yet, yeah, and it's like, that's where my notes were going. Oh my goodness, this is so exciting. Hold on, folks. I wanted to bring this back. We haven't looked at this in a very long time. Thankfulness is equal to gratitude minus complaints. Oh, you can't see my board. Please hold. You might swipe swap gratitude for thankfulness, either which way. But our our joy, our contentment with the world is equal to the number of moments of conscious gratitude minus <clears throat> the number of spoken complaints. Oh, very good. The same idea that Michael you just got us to about love is that our 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 love practice is equal to the amount that we go out and we actively serve love and including in that subtracting out the amount of time that we're adding to hatred. And Michael, I you always are on the screen as Michael Offwald, so I, I always think of you as Michael O. But that's my last name is Burroughs. I I don't know why. I just it's just a thing. I I know because I tried to send you an email and I looked for Offworld as somebody's last name and it wasn't there. <laughs> so, um, Avon, give me what was the phrase you used again that I wanted to remember and I couldn't. Oh, uh, unproductive hatred. Unproductive hatred. Wonderful. Anyone else want to make a commitment to the group with regard to unproductive hatred? It's it's everywhere this unproductive hatred, isn't it? And I'm asking, can we try to help to stop <clears throat> it? Because all unproductive hatred does is it adds unproductive hatred. I'm going to quote Martin Luther King Jr. who said, Darkness cannot dispel darkness, only light can do that. And he continued to say, Hatred cannot dispel hatred. Only love can do that. Unproductive hatred is going to get us just unproductive hatred. 14-hour commitment. Okay, now you only have like a 13-hour and 12-minute commitment. Whatever time zone you're in. Okay. Uh, thanks, folks. Yeah, I like that. I live Good. for that, Emily. Appreciate it. Um, Maria, do you have the names of some people we want to add some prayers for today? I do. These are the people to whom we are sending light and love. Joe and Ken, Sheridan H, Rita S, Greg, Larry, Chris, Shirley Waynes, Tane and Kelly, Margaret L., Jason, all the Datoma cousins, 
Lorena B, Vera, Carolyn, Glenn and family, Jerry Wagger, Lisa, and Maggie. If there is another person in our community to whom we can offer light and love, please put their name in the chat and I will add them to the list in the clubhouse. And for the people who aren't named, but who are in our thoughts, we send them light and love as well. Thank you. And let's take a minute of time for all of these people. Thank you all. Last week I made mention that I'm going to retell a story. Jane was to read the book that I wrote. And she read the book. She started it. And she said, oh, I'm going to finish it on a trip. And she took a trip down to Florida and she didn't finish it. And then more time went past and she still didn't finish reading my book. And I told people, and, and I have subsequently apologized to Jane. So I want that to be known from the outset. But I told people how mad I was at her because clearly she doesn't, oops, because clearly she doesn't care enough about my work because she hasn't finished reading my book. And like a good prosecutor can, I laid out the evidence and I explained to people that I gave her the book and the time had passed and she's finished another book in the meanwhile. And... People agreed with me. How rude of her. How da, da 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 What I had forgotten was this. That there's what we see, the observation, and then there's how we judge it. There's the thing, Jane didn't finish reading my book. And then there's a story, she's not supporting me. And the game is, and it's not so easy, to separate what we notice and what we see and what we think, what we notice and what we see from what we think. We all make up stories. I invited people to join uh, phone banking last week. And it was like this. Those people don't care because none of them joined the phone bank. All I know is people. I invited people and they didn't join the phone bank. That they didn't care, that's a judgment that I added in. We all too often think that our observation on the world is exactly what happened. And it's simply not true. Jane didn't not finish my book because she doesn't care. And I should have known when I have these poor thoughts about my beloved, I should have known that probably something was off in the calculus that I was doing the math wrong. But I had these two, the observation and the judgment, too close together. 
I'm going to ask you this week. I was going to ask you to bring paper and sticks and tape with you, and we we're going to do arts and crafts time during this hour. And if you email me that you really want to do that next week, we can do that next week. But I thought instead, maybe you can find two pieces of paper. You can draw them out right now and cut out two little stick figures, one for observation and one for judgment. And hold them with you this week, just as a way to remind yourself that your opinion about something is your opinion. It doesn't mean that you're right. And I'm going to bring up a quote here. I don't know Bill Bullard. I'd never heard of him till I saw this quote. And this is what he said. Opinion is really the lowest form of human knowledge. I'm going to say that again. Opinion is the lowest form of human knowledge. It requires no accountability, no understanding. Correct? Opinion is the lowest form of human knowledge. It requires no accountability, no understanding. The highest form of knowledge is empathy. It requires us to suspend our egos and live in another's world. This guy here, that's opinion. This guy here is empathy. It's to have space between what we see and what we think. There's a quote that says, don't believe everything you think. Ooh, I like that. I wrote about it. You'll see in the newsletter that comes on Monday. I thought there's some, there's obviously something wrong with me because I couldn't get this book that I thought should be done, done. I can't get it done. There's something wrong with me. That's this. I see that the book's not done. And I judge it immediately. There's something wrong with me. I see that the book's not done and I can say, and that's because I've never put a book together like this before. Not to be so mean to myself. Oh, wait, I just noticed there are some things coming in from our friends on the web. 14 hours hatred free is the cornerstone of how I observe Shabbat. Thank you, Chad and Lisa for that. And there's another one here. Spring Phoenix has got the same. I'll say this on Shabbat. Oh, I love this. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, okay, folks, hold on a second. I have to make an announcement. And it's a different announcement than I usually make. I'll start with the announcement I usually make. Hold on. The announcement I always make is this one. You all know what's on the other side of this card. What's it say? It says... It's okay to be okay. Close. Not to be okay. It's not, not be okay. okay. It's okay not to be okay. I have a... And it's also okay to be okay. And okay, it's it's okay to not be okay. It's okay. We don't have to be perfect. And then here's this one. This is the same quote, just a different version of it. Some weeks you'll move fucking mountains. Some weeks you'll barely make it out of bed. <laughs> Whatever week you're having, you are so damn beautiful, strong, and brave. Connie? Yes. <laughs> with me? Yep. Okay. Um... Take a moment, look at all the people who are on this call, would you? Take a moment, look at all the different faces who are here. I'll try to bring that screen up. There's everybody's faces. Folks, thank you for joining. We're going to finish up our broadcast. Would you blow a kiss to each other, to the people who are watching at home as I close off the recording? <laughs> 